later on, okay? So, retain austenite, you have a lot, it's easy to deform. Martensite is very hard to deform, okay? Ferrite is soft, but it's BCC, right? So, based, based, on, uh, micro, uh, based on just by looking at microstructure, this will be my number. Hey, wait, 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 I think I got this wrong, okay? One. So one is most difficult. Sorry, people. I, 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 I do apologize. Okay. No. So what once is most difficult. This is two. And four is most easy to deform. I do apologize. My bad. Okay. I do apologize. Then when you come into the look at the microstructure, you're like, hey, right? So 1045 does not have does not have what? Perla and Ferra uh, does not have mutton side. So this is uh, uh, most easy to deform, right? Then in, in the knowledge that I have in based on deformation, this is going to be my number one, okay? This is going to be my number, uh, number, number two. And this is going to be my number three, right? So for this case, you will see some switching already, right? 1045 is your easiest to deform, right? Based on just the hardness. Once you incorporate microstructure, that's what the, the term they use is that the, 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 the shit hit the fan, yes or no, right? So I'm going to give you the next number now. So this is 600.8, okay? This is... Four six three zero. This is one zero two zero, and this is two one five three now. Okay. Now is where we get into manufacturing. Yes or no? Right. So where once you once you come into here, this is still my number one. Right, and then this will become my number two. This is my number three, and this is my number what? Can you guys see what is going on? Yes or no? Your B and N is more affected by what? Microstructure than your hardness. Right? If, 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 and I've not done this before. I've not ranked microstructure before, by the way. I, I'm, I'm, this is my first time. I'm surprised to see like, hey, look at this, right? By looking at B and looking at microstructure, the ranking. So by looking at B and the microstructure, the ranking is the same, yes or no, right? Then it throws your what? It throws your hardness into the toilet, toilet water, into Waterloo, okay? Uh, into the toilet water, yes or no? Right, looking at the hardness is absolutely useless for what manufacturing. That's why I've shown you down here. So now we, we is to look at the strain hardening coefficient. Now we look at the we look at the index. Okay, so by looking at the index, you have zero point two three four. Oh God, zero point two three four, right? Zero point two three five. Not a lot of difference. 0 0.196 and 0 0.66. Now, based on the index, again, your, your ranking changes, okay? Based on the index. So now, this will become my number one, right? This will become my number. So these two are pretty close. These are my number two, right? These are my number two, and this will be my number four. Okay, right? So now, once you see this, you realize that there's something wrong with your ranking, yes or no? Right, especially when you look at B and we look at N. So imagine if you charge $2, right? If you look at B and N, or B and the microstructure, if you charge this is $2, and this is the $2 down here, what will happen, anyone? Are you gonna make money or lose money? Lose money. There you go, right? You are going to lose money by just looking at the hardness and specify a uh, quotation of the cost of the deform, uh, that to deform material, you're going to lose money. So this is what I, what I mean, right? This is what I mean by it's critical 
not just to look at the what hardness. A lot of time up to today, up to today, I'll tell you this, okay? Up to today in industry, and 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 not just low tech industry, even some industry that are very familiar with deformation or process or machining, they still ask number one question: how hard? Number two, what's the hardness? It's sad, okay? That's why. I want you all to make a difference, okay? I've done, I've done enough consulting. I need a break, okay? I want you all to to go out there, and hey, I understand this stuff, okay? We can do something about it. So the next thing is this, okay? So now we are we are going to compare. We are going to take up uh, two material, okay? We are going to look at AISI ten forty five, and we're going to look at Uzbo. Sorry, dual phase steel, okay? We are we are, we are going to look at these two, okay? Right, and and something interesting is going to happen. Okay, so we are going to view uh, dual phase steel and AISI ten forty five. Okay, so we're going to do this. So this is my uh, epsilon PL. So we're going to look at the plastic region. Okay. So this is uh, 500, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, okay? Then I'm going to sketch. This is just a sketch, I repeat, okay? So we're going to start at 553.1, five, okay? So this is for AI, SI, 1045 okay then the next one is uh dual phase steel dual phase steel we're going to start what soft all right all right it's going to do this and then this is our dual phase steel All right, so if you look at the energy, right? If you look at the energy under the stress strain curve, right? Let's say we pick a arbitrary point. We pick this point. All right, the the that region I pick. I'll call this epsilon one. So if you look at epsilon one, right? Which material requires more energy to deform? Anyone? AISI or 1045 or, or, or dual phase steel? Dual phase. AISI. AISI requires oh. more energy. <laughs> right? And then if I pick another point down here, epsilon 2, which one requires more energy now? <laughs> Anyone? Do a face. Do a face. Right? So, what this means is what, no? If you look at dual phase steel and 1045, right? The price is not necessarily wrong. Right, you can see down here AISI ten forty five require more energy. Right, uh, uh, dual phase steel require less energy epsilon one. This cost is valid. More energy, less energy. But at one stage there'll be a crossover, right? And the crossover will happen somewhere around here. I'm going to call it epsilon OPT, right? I'm going to call it epsilon OPT. Once it goes to the right hand side of the epsilon OPT, something happened, right? Dual phase steel now requires more energy. If that's the case, dual, uh, once it passes epsilon PL, this 50 cent is dead. You are done, okay? You are done, okay? You cannot copy. You probably have to increase to $4, for example. Right? So, 
Can you see the value of what is going to happen? Can anyone see where am I heading? Can anyone visualize what's going to happen? Anyone? So now is we have to find what? We have to find what is this epsilon op, op, optimum, right? Because this is competitive advantage. What do I mean by competitive advantage? If you know the strain that the material is going to deform, you can charge at a cheaper price for dual phase steel compared to 1045. If the strain is very high, you switch your costing, right? What do I mean? So down here, uh, uh, AISI 1045, you charge uh, $2, right? Uh, dual phase, you charge 50 cents, right? Once you pass the optimum point, AISI 1045, you still charge $2. Right, dual phase deal. You can charge three dollars. Okay, right. So your your your, your price is a, a sliding scale. But how to know when you can when you have to slide? So if 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 industry that has no knowledge, they will just say, okay, one one fixed price. This is more difficult to deform based on this ranking. We always charge four dollars. This one we charge two dollars. No. Not necessarily true. I've showed you down here. Once you nail down the epsilon optimum, right? You can change your costing system. So how do you find your epsilon optimum? Anyone? I have a question about where it's placed on the graph. Um, is it where the two lines cross over each other uh, between the two uh, materials we're looking at? You mean at this point? Yes. No, that's not optimum. <laughs> that's Would it be just finding a... the area under the curve? Say it again. Would it be finding the area under the curve? There you go. That's what energy is all about. Well done. Okay, you have applied. You have applied what we have learned. Okay, so so to find epsilon optimum. Okay. The condition is this, okay? The condition is the energy to deform AI SI 1045 must be the same as the energy to deform dual phase steel. Okay, so once you have this, okay, so we we are, we are, we are do a, 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 a bit of a bit of math, okay? So we we do a a bit of math, so let me uh, erase this. I have all the constants. Okay, so let me erase this. All right. So what we have now is we can we can with the formula. We're going to use U is equal to uh, A epsilon uh, plus by B epsilon n plus one over n plus one. Okay, so that's the formula. So on the left hand side, so U for A I S I A I S I. Is going to be equal to U uh, dual phase steel. So the A value is 553.1. All right. And then you're going to find the epsilon optimum. All right. Then plus by B is 600.8. All right, and then is epsilon optimum. Uh, the n is uh, wait. The n is equal to one point two three four divided by one point two three four, and then this whole term will be equal to uh, one twenty 
then send to power 6 epsilon optimum and then plus by 1020 times 10 to power 6 epsilon optimum and this is equal to 1.196 